as a general principle, I've always taken the view that the best way to make a model uh, of anything is to follow full size practice. Now, unfortunately, this philosophy falls at the first hurdle when one looks at the way in which a full size framed hull used to be built. I just can't see how this could ever be a practical method of building a model. Now, some kit manufacturers will try to get you to do exactly that. And they even market gadgets to do so. And this is a building jig from Billing Boats, which seems to me to be utterly impractical, <coughs> even with bulkheads like this rather than frames. There's very little chance of keeping them all square across the hull. There's nothing to keep them exactly upright, either fore and aft or athwart ships, because the chances are that the stringers and later the planking will exert uneven pressures. So one answer is simply to build the hull upside down, as this example from one of Peter Rogers' models shows. But I think even this has limitations, notably that access to the inside of the hull is impossible until after the model's been removed from the building board. And once all the scrap material has been cut away and the hull taken off the board, the shell is in principle unstable until the deck beams have been fitted. Without deck beams or their equivalent, a hull can flex in or out, which has the effect of altering the, the rake of the stem and stern posts as the sides flex in and out. Even worse, it can deform, some of the frames can shift over sideways, the whole boat becomes banana shaped. And I'm sorry to say I have seen one or two models look exactly like that in the not too distant past. But however, there is a solution that addresses all these issues and it's known as the Harold Hahn method. I think it was he who first publicized this in Model Shipwright numbers six to eight, which was 1973-74. The technique was probably in use long before that. And it's certainly been widely used ever since. And all I've done is added what I think are a few refinements. As I'm sure you're all aware, the method consists of simply building the model upside down by adding extensions to the frames that allows them to be fixed above a, a building board, which becomes the frame of reference. Extension should be as short as possible, consistent with keeping the frames all above the board and with the keel or the water lines, depending on the nature of the boat, parallel to the building board. And the next step then is to draw the plan view of where each of these extensions would meet the board. And this outline should then be transferred to the building board, usually by gluing the printout onto it. And having marked the position of each frame extension, notch it out, keeping the notches accurately matching the projected width of each frame. And finally, cut away the inside of the board, leaving just enough material to support the frame extensions. And that basically is the Harold Hahn method. And these are his, some of his models, taken in fact from his original um, model shipwright publication. Now, let me show you some of the things that I think of it have improved it. And this is an old building board of mine. As I said, I've had to dredge around finding pictures. And this is an old board, so I apologize for the state of it, but it illustrates the key thing. The first point about the building board is that it must be stable and it's got to stay flat and true. And Nowadays, that means stiffening the board with battens underneath, as you can see here in this underneath view. Some of my early models, I was able to use block board, but block board seems to have disappeared since the millennium. I haven't seen any for many years. So I've had to go to this process every time. The next point, which is really fundamental, is that the two sides of the board must be straight and parallel to a fair degree of accuracy. And it's worth putting the time in here to get that right. Having got the two sides right, you then mark a center line down the middle, which allows the building 
plan to be stuck to the board and the notches for the frames cut out. Now this is in fact the same board when it was first being used. And what I have here is a frame and the keel just loosely standing in place to start to get things lined up. The next step, which seems obvious, but uh, I haven't seen anybody else do it, is to fit upright boards on the end. They need to be fixed firmly, but in such a way that you can take them off and then put them back accu in an accurate location. And that means using screws and dowels for, for that purpose. And you mark a center line on each board accurately at right angles to the baseboard. You can then stick copies of the body plan to the end board. And I would always use a spray mount for that to avoid distorting the paper. It also has the advantage that it's repositionable. You can take that off and put a different version of the body plan on when you want to. The next step is to use a razor saw and just cut a little slot in each board just down to the, the level of the, the keel. And in those razor slots, you hook in a piece of black cotton. Now I've done it like that because the cotton is actually, frankly, a ruddy nuisance. It gets caught in everything and it's constantly being dragged out of the way and having to be repositioned. And so this process, just hooking it into a slot is nice and easy. The purpose of it is that it allows you to, to align things accurately. Now here we are, this is in fact the same model that we've just seen. And you are looking down along the, as it happens along the stem here, this is the keel, and this is one of the forward frames. And by ar arranging your eye line, so the cotton lines up with the, the center line on the end board, you can see immediately that that frame is slightly canted to one side. It's not absolutely centered. So that makes it very easy to just pull the frame back until it centers up on the cotton and you can then fix it in place. You do that with three or four frames along the length of the, of the hull and you then have a basis for building the rest of the hull around it. In this particular example, you can see I've used the keel, a keelson to lock those three frames in position. And this is a different model showing again the same sort of principle. In this case, I haven't got the keel in position, but you can see here's the black cotton. And here obviously is the body plan. Now, we now come to really a useful gadget that's the key to the advantages of this process, and that's an engineer's marking gauge. Now, I guess most of you will be familiar with that, but just in case anybody isn't, that's what an engineer's marking gauge looks like. And basically it's just an adjustable pointer and you can adjust it by altering this clamp screw here or a fine adjustment with a screw arrangement down here. And the key to it is that through this heavy base, there are four steel pins, which are a sliding fit and can be pushed out or retracted as necessary. So we've got two here at the back of the board. You allow those to run along the edge of your building board and using the pointer, you pick up a point that you're interested in on any particular frame set the pointer, then lift the whole gauge up, stand it on the far side of the board. And if your frame is truly symmetrical, then the pointer will again exactly touch it. And so this is a very easy way of checking the symmetry of your frames uh, at any point on the hull. The next point is that you can do the same thing and pick up a point anywhere on the body plan and transfer it from the body plan to the hull. So again, it's a quick and easy way of using an infinite number, in effect, an infinite number of templates. Of course, not everyone's got a fancy marking gauge like this, but you don't need it. 
I tried to knock up the simplest I could possibly think of, which is basically a block of wood with a, a groove under it, two strips of wood and a clothes peg. And that will do the job perfectly well. Now, I guess anybody who is embarking on a, a model of this type is going to be capable of doing something considerably more sophisticated than that. But I just wanted to make the point, there is nothing fancy about a marking gauge. It is just a method of picking up a point in space relative to the edge of the board. Now, this is the, the next stage. Um, the, the hull has been sanded to true. Notice still that the keel has not been fitted. It is much easier to sand a hull without the keel in place. This time, the body plan has been replaced with a different version, which shows the line of the, either in this case, whales, but it could just be planking lines. And again, you can use the marking gauge to pick up the alignment of these points and transfer them to the hull. This has now been done on this particular hull, and you notice that I've now taken the end boards off. You will need to do this partly just to be able to sight along the hull, but also because, of course, you're using long lengths of wood and they're going to, the end boards are going to get in the way. But don't throw them away because you're going to need them again later. So these are the planking whales in, in situ, and this is some of the planking has started. Once you've completed the planking, put the end boards back on and turn the whole thing upside down, and they now become a support. Notice the hull is still entirely supported by the building board. And you can now, you've got access to the interior, you can put in details, in this case, these supporting pillars, and you can start putting the deck beams in. The hull is still being held stable by the building board. And that's it. Once you have completed the, the, the framing of the deck, and notice again, this is a bit of dreaded black cotton being used to line up something. Once you've done all this framing here, you can finally cut the hull away from the building board. There it is. And there's the final result. And that's it. Very simple ideas, but I think they do help to give you a stable hull during the critical stages of the building. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.